Help us from the Ackerman Institute. Hi. Hi. Before I, I try to ask you an intelligent question, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this was so beautiful and rich and complex and full of, I'm feeling really full of uh, probably all the feelings you're all feeling right now. I feel, you know, the sadness, the joy, the anger, the grief, the, the discovery. Um, so first of all, how long have you been working on, on this movie? Uh, about four years. Uh, so I helped develop the film with Shalise and been around. Yeah. So for a long, a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Four years is a long time. So yeah. I was curious actually about what were the important um, dilemmas that you wanted to show in in this movie. So I'm sure four years is a long time. Mm -hmm. A lot of decisions and a lot of choices to make over that time. Yeah. What sort of were the main uh, dilemmas, the main guidelines that you had for this? Movie? Sure. So the original conceit of the film was to follow a trans guy learning to sing. It was, it was this idea of uh, when you take testosterone, your voice drops. And I had this thought about when my own voice was about to drop, um, what would my singing voice, would I lose my singing voice? And so that Shalise and I have been friends and we're filmmakers in the Bay Area. And I, I pitched her this idea about like, what if we did a story about a guy learning to sing and finding his voice metaphorically and uh, literally. So. Um, that was kind of the original idea, and we just had no idea how we were going to tell that story. So uh, we were really lucky to find Ben. We found Ben through Joe. Joe is somebody that a lot of us know. Um, and we had followed a, a singing class, actually. There's a guy named Eli Conley in the Bay Area, if you guys know him. He's lovely. He's a wonderful human. And he teaches queer people to sing, which is a really powerful gift. And we looked at that, we did a whole bunch of ideas, and then it was, you know, we found Ben, and I think Ben is so open, and the camera loves that kid. Like, he just, like, is beautiful on screen, and had no idea really where it was gonna go, um, because, you, you know, verite film, you have no idea where it's gonna take you, but I think from the earliest moments, Shalise and I spent a lot of time talking about how do you tell a, a trans story? How do you tell a story about someone transitioning? What do you do, what do you not do? We didn't really want to make it about surgery. If Shalise were here, she would tell you that she spent a lot of time trying to not make a transition film about surgery. But the reality is, is that's a huge milestone in, in a lot of people's lives. Not everyone uh, has surgery or tran transitions, but for those people who do, like myself, it's a pretty big marker. And it's hard to tell a story without making it about the things that are most important to that person in their life. And that was the thing that was most important to him. Wonderful. Um, I feel like that's one of the ways in which it's successful because I think you, you you sort of tell that story, but you also go beyond. And I'm curious about what happened when you encountered uh, Ben's family yep. and how how you made decisions there. Like obviously we see Susie, we see um, Mom, mm -hmm. uh, and we see the importance of the, having a community yep. I and mean, the difference between when when she, at the beginning of her process, and when she meets other moms, and there are other points of reference. Um, but there's a dad we don't you know, see, we yep. just hear about, there's a sister, just, what were your, your decisions there? Yeah, so, I, you know, you kind of have to let the film be the film that it wants to be, and Susie was reluctant but willing, and I think that that was the most important gift, honestly, the, a huge gift to the world, to be so open, to be so vulnerable to uh, put parts of herself that I think she's not proud of on screen. Um, Ben's dad and sister were not available. We're not interested, not available. And I think, frankly, like the film formally is a tighter film because of it. I think you feel their absence, and I think Ben felt their absence. So I think that it actually works kind of beautifully that way. But they were, they were never filmed. Absolutely. OK. I'm curious to see what questions uh, the audience might have. Um, any any thoughts or questions you want to ask Kyle? And I knew you might be a little shy at the beginning, but <laughs> you can. You will. Pull well, while through. you wait, I will just say yes. Molly, the animator, is here, and I want to praise her more. So one question I'd like to ask. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think Ben. Want to repeat the question? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so the question is about Ben's family now and where uh, Ben's father and sister are. 
Um, Ben's father is more present now. They've come a long way. His sister is taking her own path and her own time. Thank you. Uh, was there anything that you cut out of the film that I don't see regret cutting, but you sort of wish you had found a way to put it into the film? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question is what, what uh, got left on the cutting room floor? Um, I wasn't in the edit suite as much as I would have liked, or at all, really. Um, I moved here, Shalise made this on the West Coast. But um, in earlier cuts, there was a scene, so it's great that you talked about community, because one of the undercurrents of the film, I think, is about families you're born with and families you choose, which for anyone who's queer, I think, can identify. And honestly, non-queer people can identify with, too. There's the family that you build. And there was a scene where, sort of when they're on the floor um, making ties, that was all kind of the build up for Joe's friends were getting married. And there was a beautiful scene of their wedding, which um, I, I, I'm sorry to say that I actively encouraged to be cut from the film, which is a beautiful scene, of, and, but it just kind of didn't fit narratively. And it, I, the whole time I was like, ah, oh, we don't know these people, and it's great that they're getting married, and I love queer marriage and all of that. But, and the point Shalise wanted to bring into it was like, this is about family, and it's all about family, and the family that you bring into the world, and the love that you can find outside of your born family. But I think we got that without the wedding scene. And, and you're right, it is really tight, and, yeah. it, you know, and I feel like it's beautiful the way you, you show how the family of choice actually helps uh, biological or blood family become family, really. Yeah. You know, how mom really is helped by, by Joe, by Dylan, by the people around. Uh, and I love that song, but I try to say, though, you thought I was saying goodbye. It's just, oh, yeah. it's just really unbelievable. Um, other questions? Um, that's a good question for more for Shalise than me, because she was on set more. Um, I don't think so. I think that it was more um, kind of like let it go as it was. I think Shalise is a pretty strict documentarian. It doesn't like to be a, a creationist, um, not, not, to, not to disparage the beautiful documentary style that has uh, come up in the last 10 years. Um, but no, but I will, I, I will pivot and answer a question I would uh, like to answer um, that you don't know, which is that I think one of the coolest kind of editing things that happens in this film is that we knew going in that, um, that anyone, whoever would be the subject, their voice would be changing. And to your point, one of the things that documentarians do all the time is cheat and get people to say things later. Uh, so you'll, you'll pick up lines. Once you've kind of done the cut of the film, you'll go back and say, like, I really wish you could just say, I'm so sad, right there. But we knew his voice would change. So um, it's also a, a, a huge accomplishment to the editor that he was able to craft the narrative and to Shalise for getting the verbal coverage, if you will, early, because we knew we couldn't go back to Ben later. Question. Yeah, I saw that public television was involved in the funding. Does this, where will we be seeing this on the BLAW? And are the boy, t or the real boy t-shirts still available somewhere? <laughs> That's great. I'm sure Bennett would get you a t-shirt. Um, uh, yes, so ITVS came in as a very early funder of the film. Thank you, public television and our public arts funding. And it will be on, P uh, sorry, Independent Lens, which is a PBS program in the summer of two, uh, 20, next year, next summer. So Independent Lens on your local channel. Be sure that I will be blasting all of you. To tell your friends. <laughs> yes, please. One last one. Yes, thank you. Hi. Joe made a big impact on Ben's life. I was just wondering how he's doing. Yeah, Joe makes such a big impact on everyone's life. I love that man so much. Um, you know, he, the longest period of sobriety that he's had was when this film was being shot. I think that he goes in and out of it. Um, uh, right now, he's working on a, he, it's so amazing, but someone contacted him to write a musical about a trans Civil War soldier, which is apparently a true story that I knew nothing about. And so he's actively working on that. He's actually, both of them are touring with the film, too. This film is doing really well. And uh, Joe was just in the UK for a couple of weeks. So he's doing great. Um, he's just being Joe. Thanks for coming, guys. It's Sunday night, so thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.